the British Army had a very different uh, policy. You could bring your wife along on the uh, ships that came over to America, and uh, many of the uh, men did bring their wives with them or their sweethearts with them. And these women were listed as the boat was loaded. They kept a, I should ship was loaded. They kept an inventory of what came on the ship, who the sailors were, who the fighting men were, who were, who were being transported, what supplies they had brought on the ship. And the women were listed under the category of the baggage of the ship. And that's why in many parts of this country, a woman who had a bad reputation in town was referred to as a piece of baggage. It comes from this transport uh, inventory that the British uh, uh, kept. Among the women who often traveled with their husbands on the part of the British Army were the wives of Hessians. The Hessians were uh, contract soldiers. That is, these were men who earned their uh, livelihood by uh, signing on to fight for a king or a prince or a, a government that needed soldiers. And uh, Hesse produced a good number of these uh, con uh, contract uh, soldiers. Among them was the Baron de Riddicel, who brought his men over to America to fight with the British. And with the Baron came the Baroness, Frederica von Riddicel, uh, de Riddicel. And she was at Saratoga when Burgoyne was defeated, that is the great turning point in the American Revolution when the British army was defeated at Saratoga, General Burgoyne whose nickname was Gentleman Johnny Burgoyne, and it was not, those, as some people thought, because he was a dandy. It was because he did not whip his soldiers as much as uh, regular generals did in the British Army. That is, they weren't flogged for infractions as often, and so the men referred to him as Gentleman Johnny. Well, traveling with them were the Hessian troops of uh, uh, Deridicel, and so the Baroness was captured along with her husband. And all these Hessian uh, troops were brought to Boston at first uh, to uh, make sure they didn't fight again. Boston, when winter came, said, no, it's too expensive for us to provide supplies and firewood to these enemies. You've got to take them somewhere else. And so they were sent to Virginia, and therein hangs a tale. The Baroness had traveled with her husband everywhere, and uh, she uh, produced a lot of children. All of them were girls. All of them were daughters. And everywhere she went that she had a child, she named the child after the place. And so she had a daughter named Canada. <laughs> and, she, uh, and when she got to uh, Virginia, Thomas Jefferson, who despite his uh, reputation as a Democrat, was actually uh, uh, very entranced with people who had royal titles. And so he immediately invited the Baron and the Baroness de Redicel to his house for dinner, and they became good friends. And when the Baroness produced a child in America, uh, it was a girl, which she named Virginia. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, who among many of his characteristics that women's historians don't find to be positive was um, um, not a feminist. And he sent the Baron a condolence note when he found out that this child, she was named America, not Virginia, I apologize. 
when he found out that the Baroness had had yet another daughter instead of a son, uh, she kept a very elaborate diary of her travels with her husband. And it's filled with, I think, very vivid accounts of what it was like uh, with Burgoyne's army that had marched down from Canada and ran out of food and ran out of supplies uh, and suffered enormously. A lot of these uh, women who were traveling with the army w were virtually starving, as were many of Burgoyne's soldiers. Uh, uh, and in fact, when he surrendered, the American general invited him to a rather sumptuous dinner uh, because, of course, they were both gentlemen and gentlemen treated one another that way. Meanwhile, the army was still starving. Uh, and so her accounts of this are really very dramatic and really very detailed and would make a wonderful, an excerpt from one of them would make a wonderful uh, piece to use in a classroom to see what being in the army in the 18th century was really like for the ordinary soldier because she was very sensitive to the way the Hessians, who were ordinary soldiers, who were traveling with her husband were treated. Uh, so I think you have to think about the American Revolution realistically as a war that involved men and women. It's not difficult to imagine that, I think, because it was an eight-year home front war. And that meant that civilians as well as official soldiers were involved everywhere the war went. Uh, and so next time you think about Valley Forge, I hope you'll think about it as a place where women and children as well as soldiers uh, spent uh, very difficult winter.